Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today we're going to be taking a look at a simpler version of the custom craft. It's a uh, custom crops. It's not um, as sophisticated as the one that mimics is closer to vanilla. Now I have provided that in the past, but it's really hard to adapt to um, you know, things like uh, double crops and stuff like that. This one will be basically the standard one that you can basically adapt to custom, like double crops and other crops and stuff like that. But uh, I'll be working on the workspace for that in the next couple days. Um, basically, I've integrated the light level because that's important. An additional um, timer for delaying the growth and that's about it. That's literally it. There's eight stages, so you can kind of work within that. Um, beetroots and stuff like that also have eight stages. Uh, the double over a couple of the textures uh, between the stages, so it uh, looks like there's only four, but really there's actually eight. So um, yeah, there's that. So let's uh, demonstrate that we can plant this on farmland. I will cover the technique for that of course so we need to actually place this down on farmland you can probably um i think i'm pretty sure that i have it set up so you can basically put it down on any custom farmland as well but uh this is basically what i've used for the tutorial so we'll use that all right so after we've done that we need to get the seeds and these are just a regular item so we're going to plant that down and it should start growing pretty much immediately It'll just take a little bit of time for it to actually grow, but uh, we, how it basically works is it's on a random um, tick update, so we could actually speed this up going game rule, and then random tick speed, and then we can set it to like a thousand, and then as you can see it grows faster, just as if it was like regular wheat and stuff. So that's basically that, and we'll put that back down to the default value of three. So if we break the block, well, not in creative because that's kind of just defeats the purpose. So let's go into game mode, survival, and we'll break the block. And then as you can see, we got some tomatoes and it also drops a seed as well for the actual crop as well. So it's very similar to wheat in that sense. So as you can see, we got a bunch of this. Uh, this is a food, so if we were to basically run around and take some damage and stuff like that, we would be able to eat this. And um, the seeds allow us to replant and stuff as well. So as you can see, the number of the seeds goes down, just as expected. So yeah, that's basically that. Uh, light level though, let's go back into game mode survive or creative. Uh, I should do creative, there we go. And then we'll just kind of go into a cave and I'll show you that the mechanics that the um, stuff works with. So let's just grab some sand or some grass quickly. We'll go into a dark part of this cave. I'm not sure where this is. It's, um, light level is five, that should be dark enough. So we'll place that down here. And we'll hold that and then as you can see I'm right clicking right now and it's not basically placing down the seeds that's intended so if we go a little bit further we'll keep an eye on the light level under where it says client light level and we'll place one right here that's eight apparently and we can actually plant it here so it requires a light level of eight like regular crops and uh, yeah so that's basically that so if you place torches and stuff down obviously it's going to affect the light level and the light level is basically getting where the block is so if we were to stand right here uh the client light level is at the feet level so it's basically saying that the light level where we're standing is seven so that's basically that and if we go to decorations grab a torch or something then we can adjust the light level for that block. So it's seven right now. And if we place a torch right here as it turned to 12, so that's like 13, 14 or something like that. So uh, 13 and then 14 right where we're standing. So this would be a valid spot for 
growing crops now we can actually do that right now and it should grow over time so yeah that's um basically it so let's go into m creator and i'll show you the very simple script on how it works and i'll cover all the little nicks and nacks of the procedures and stuff like that and the elements all right so when you open up the workspace um i will provide the procedures and stuff of course but i'll also provide the workspace so it's easy for porting and making sure that everything's set up later on uh, it's also a good way to make sure that things actually do work the way that they're intended as this is like an example workspace so if you have trouble setting it up on your own you can always go in to the workspace i try to make sure that there is a workspace with the base example so it's easier for people to determine if the the actual procedure is broken or if it's something that they're doing wrong anyhow um it's under a folder called single crops uh there will be one in the future called double crops which just basically expands the script and focuses on double crops rather using the same similar script uh you will need resources you'll need eight stages for your textures for your blocks and you will need a food item texture any seed item texture for your actual thing as well Going to single crops, there is a few different categories. There is seeds, food, and blocks. So let's take a look at the seeds first. Uh, seeds basically have the item. So they're just a basic item for this particular thing. We have everything set up like that. Uh, there isn't any real um, difference in the settings. I think most of them are default. You can customize the creative tab or pretty much everything. It doesn't have an inventory or anything. The only um, procedure or trigger that we're using is when right clicked on block and then we're running this uh, procedure here. So basically the only thing that you need to worry about when you set up the procedure is making sure that your seed item is assigned to the seed um, MBT or pardon me local variable and that will carry over everything down here so you don't need to worry about it and then the local variable for block state which is your stage zero so the very first stage for your crop being grown this basically just says hey we need to plant the actual stage zero and then it will run everything that requires that particular one another notable mention is you will need to adjust your tag right here uh, the reason for that is uh, depending on your namespace and your farmland that you want it to grow on you will need to adjust this so for this uh, per personal uh, project that I'm working on uh, the namespace is crops with an S so we can basically have crops for our namespace and then we use a colon and then after that we basically have just the tag for the blocks called farmland now we use that in the tag later on so I'll basically cover that in a little bit but you're going to actually use that throughout the procedure a couple times so make sure that you memorize what the tag is and make sure that you have set up the tag um, to break down what this does uh, it's basically testing if the right hand the main hand item is equal to seeds if the block that we're right clicking on is farmland from the tag and then we're testing if the block above is air that's important so we're not like replacing other crops and stuff if we somehow manage to get right click on a block on the side or something like that and then what we're doing is we're basically testing is um, the block above valid position for stage zero like the stage zero block after which we're replacing the block and place adding the stage zero thing we're not keeping the mbt or the rotation state or the mbt tags because we we don't have anything there to begin with so we want to make sure that it um, starts brand new has no tags and stuff like that except for the ones that we basically add uh, the last thing that we're doing is we're going and testing if we're not in creative and then we're going to set the main hand item get the main hand item amount and basically this is basically the 
get amount get number of items in main hand which is basically just saying how many items are in the main hand and then we're subtracting by one you can find this block under the I believe item procedures and it should be this one right here you just replace the provided item stack with the main hand which can be found under entity data and the main hand procedure is right here the block here is math so you can go under math grab that one right here set the plus sign to subtract and then add a number which is found up here and this uh, procedure as a whole is found under I believe entity management and it's somewhere in here pretty sure yeah it's right here so you have the offhand and main hand one we went with main hand one replace the number with math and stuff here and then the main hand um, procedure block for the actual item that we're replacing it with and that basically just uh, subtracts one from the, the, the main hand of the uh, provided player the not can be found under the logic that's under not right there and is in creative that is found under player procedures and if you scroll down it should be right down here where it says is the event slash target entity in game mode and then it not set you want to set that to creative so it basically says any other game mode basically subtract an item that will make sure that adventure mode um, even though spectator doesn't really have a main hand it would do spectator as well and as well as survival so that just is an easier way of doing it then rather than selecting all the other ones and replace block that's under block management replace block right there again your math operator and stuff can be found under your math operators and stuff like that local variables so these ones right here uh, you'll need to create a local variable set it a block state or the items item stack what one you want and if you import the procedure it should automatically import the um the local variables as well so all you need to do is basically go to local variables and then you either grab this block here or the this block here and that will basically set that up for basically setting the variables you would need these two blocks here and then the other one is is valid position i believe that's a newer block is found under uh block data it's this one right down here and then you just basically set the coordinates where you're basically placing the block and then test if the location is valid for that particular block state and then we have is material type error uh, again that can be found in the same tab it's this one right here is block state or provided block state material type rock you would set this to air instead to make sure that it's either cave air uh, void air or um, the regular air as well so that's basically what that one does and then we want to test for a variable if you scroll up a little bit further there is one right here called is the block state tagged in block tag as and then you would set your namespace and tag name so what we've done is basically just tested for the coordinates of that particular thing which can be found way at the top here which is get block at and then we're just basically testing for the block location testing for where we're actually right clicking on which should be the farmland that we basically specify in the tag and then lastly we're comparing two things uh, to get the item comparator you can basically grab this one here under logic and then you want to test for again the main hand item this one right here under entity data and the local variable for the seeds as well so that's basically that all that's going on here the last two things that you need to worry about is setting the two tags which are the item stack and the block state so you will need these two blocks for that and your local variable for these two here and then you need to set your first stage and your seeds uh, the only other thing that you will need to find is the if statement you can find that under your flow control all your different flow control things are under here 
you'll just need a basic if statement re on the top here for this particular procedure. All right, so that one's out of the way now. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit different. So that's basically all that there is for the seeds. And we've covered the procedure. We've covered the seeds there. Uh, let's go on to the food. Food's really basic stuff. Uh, we just created a food item. Um, you can, I've actually recently covered the food uh, procedures and stuff like that for all for 2021.3. So all this has been covered recently. And there's no procedures or anything. It's just a basic food item. So that's all that there is for that. And then under blocks, we have a few other components here for the um, actual procedures and stuff. There's only two procedures, uh, one loot table, and there is the tag itself for farmland. And then there are the eight stages of blocks. So we'll cover all those really quickly. All right, so let's take a look at the stage zero first. Um, once you get most of the blocks set up, like the first stage, it's pretty much uh, the same thing over and over again. But regardless, I'll cover um, the basics of the procedure and the elements and stuff like that. So we want to set the um, the texture um, right down here for our first stage. And then what we want to do is go ahead and select cross model. This is what um, bushes and generally use. If you want to use something similar to crops, you can go with a crop model down here and that will work the exact same way. Uh, cross model is basically things like grass and stuff like that. So we can set either one of those and it would work perfectly fine. I think bushes use, like berry bushes use cross model as well. So you could use pretty much those two if you really wanted to. It would still fit into the base game for the things. So I've set that because a, a tomato plant is kind of like a bush. So I set it for that particular purpose. And uh, outside of that, you want to make sure that it's cut out. So select that part. Uh, that's important for the transparency and stuff. And side of that, that's the only things that you need to do under this tab block. Uh, the block um, boxes, bounding boxes, pardon me. Um, you will need to adjust this just a little bit. Now, general crops uh, will go the height of the pixels for the actual crop that it's basically textured for. So if the block is three pixels tall, you want to basically set this number to three pixels tall. So this is basically the, the maximum Y coordinate. For the minimum Y coordinate, what you want to do is this is how you are able to put it on things like farmland is you're going to need to set 0 0.001. Now the reason for that is it basically lifts it off of the farmland. It's a little technique that um, I've been able to do over the years and it hasn't changed. So basically what this does is make sure that the block that when we place it on top, it doesn't trample the, the farmland and turn it into dirt. So if this isn't set up, it will probably um, brick your entire crop with in the process and basically drop the seeds and stuff like that. So make sure that this is set up to 0 0.001. Outside of that, the, the rest of the coordinates can be left the same. Uh, you will want to set the material type to plant. Uh, that's important. Um, I think there was some mechanics for letting the light level light be transparent through the block. So if you don't set it to plant, it might not um, work efficiently. So make sure that it's set to plant. Uh, you do not want a creative item tab for this particular thing. And I suggest setting your drop for the plant to seeds as well as the creative pick item to seeds as well. You want at least one return seed. Generally, that's what Minecraft does for things like wheat and stuff. If you break the wheat early before it's mature, it'll give back one seed for you to replant if you needed to. Uh, tool able to destroy. I didn't specify that because it's not really required. And the vanilla sounds are basically set up for the plant. So when you break a plant, it basically plays the plant sounds. You will want to set the block to can walk through the block. This is important. Lots of crops you can actually walk through. So that's what you need to do for that part. And then the only other thing under this page that you have to worry about is required is setting the hardness and resistance to zero. That's basically what 
crops and plants and other stuff uh, basically have for the hardest resistance is zero. So make sure that is set up there. Crop dependency, or pardon me, advanced proper properties is uh, we're basically not using the tick rate. We're using a random tick rate. That's how we're able to make it grow faster when we change the game rule for the um, random tick time. And the block color on map should be set to foliage. Outside of that, um, pretty much all the other settings are customizable. We did use a valid position, uh, valid placement condition. So this basically just tests for the light level. Uh, we're getting the light level at X, Y, and Z. So this block is not found under the block one. There is one under the blocks, but we're not using that one. There is... Uh, get light level of block at X, Y, and Z. This one didn't seem to work. I'm not sure why. I think it might have to do if the block is basically provides light level. I think that one might test for if how much light it actually provides, which is not what we want. We actually want one under world data, and we want to go and select the one that says get the light level at x y and z and then we've basically tested for the x position y position y plus 0 0.5 and then z position this seems to work just fine and then we want to test if the light level is equal to or greater than that's what the little underscore part is and then we want to test if it's eight so if it's eight or above then we want to place the crop and then what we want to do is make sure that the block underneath, so y minus 1, is equal to farmland. So again, that's our tag, what we're using. We're going to return true, basically saying, yes, spawn the, basically allow the block to be placed. If it doesn't, it's going to pop off and basically drop your seeds. And then if this doesn't return true, then what it's going to do is just return false, and then it's going to pop off and break. So that's basically that procedure. You can find the return blocks under logic, or pardon me, flow control. It's the light blue ones right here. And for the logic, you need the true and false statement. You can change it by clicking on it. Other than that, um, basically we've covered all the other things. The and statement can be found under logic as well. You just basically grab the light blue one, select that, the equal sign, and then you can change it to an and statement like so. So that's basically all that there is under the conditional uh, placement one. Um, outside of that, I think that's all that there is for that particular page. Tile entity, um, you actually will need to enable this and disable these to zero. And then you're going to want to go ahead and set the inventory size to zero. Now, this is because we're going to be using the MBT and the procedure later on. Under fluid and storage control, um, you're not going to need to use this. Triggers, uh, you're basically going to need to use the update tick. Now, this is basically will run if either one of these are above one for this one, or if it is uh, checked to be random. So this procedure will run each time the tick is called. Uh, what we need to do is basically create every single stage, so all eight stages, and for block states, and then we're going to assign the blocks for them, so you'll need the blocks before that. And then what I've done is I've basically gone ahead and tested for the growth time. This is a basically MBT for the block, and the reason for this is we're testing if it's equal to or less than zero. And then we're going to, when the when the tick updates in the world, what it's going to do is it's going to go through the entire stages and test if there's a valid position at the current location. And then it's going to replace it with the next stage. So it's going to do that for the current stage. And then when the next tick happens, it's going to do it for the next stage and this next stage until it reaches stage seven. And then it's just not going to do it anymore. So that's basically how that works. 
um, for the growth time down here, um, depending on if you want to delay it or not, uh, if it is set to zero, then it's just going to basically say, okay, then we need to run this all the time. It's going to be the exact um, same speed as the world game, the, the game's tick speed. So if you want to delay that a little bit longer, well, not really delay, but you know, make it longer, then you want to set this number in ticks. So there is 20 ticks uh, per second. So if you wanted to delay it by uh, add an additional, um, like additional time to that particular thing, uh, you want to use very low numbers. So for example, if you want to delay it by two times that it would update, then you would basically set the number to one. And what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and basically when the first time that it should update, it's going to delay that number, subtract it by one, and then it's going to be zero. So basically what it's going to do then is update the block, set it to one. It has to go through one first, and then it's going to be zero. So it's going to, the next time that it comes around, it's going to do that again. If you set it to like something like 10, it will have to try updating 10 times before it gets to zero, which will then um, basically finally update. So use very low numbers, uh, probably anywhere from like zero to five would probably be long enough for that. I've set it to zero by default, so it just basically is the same default time as the Minecraft time. You can adjust it if you want to, but um, just keep in mind that low numbers are probably better because uh, longer numbers will basically take a really, really long time for them to update because it's random. So that's basically that. We're, we've already covered the replace block, the valid position block that we've covered, and we've covered the... Um, actually, we haven't covered the block equals thing. You can find that under the logic and grab the yellow operator for that one. And then we're just basically testing for the current block location, which is this one right here. And then the local variable for the block state. Again, you don't really need to mess with all these um, things down here. It's all covered up at the top here of the procedure. So you just need to set the stage for the uh, equivalent of the stage for your blocks in these particular rows. So outside of that, that's all that really needs to be done. Again, if you want to delay it, then you can set the number down here to you delay it longer if you want. Now this is going to be run from every per every procedure or every update tick for each blocks that you basically add for your stages. So that's why we're testing for different ones in this procedure. So this is the only other procedure that is in this particular workspace. Everything else is linked to this one for the blocks. So outside of that, uh, we can save that. Uh, there is one last thing that we need to do for our first stage. Um, we need to add a when block added. And the reason for this <clears throat> is we're going to need to make sure that our first stage is actually set up for the growth, um, growth time here. And we need to basically set that to the number of times that we're going to basically replace the, or have attempt for it to replace the actual number. So for example, um, whatever number that you put down here is going to need to be the same for this procedure here. So when we when the block is added for the first stage, what you want to do is make sure that is the same number. So if you use five here, then make sure to use five here. So that's basically that. Um, reason again is the first stage will automatically be set to zero if we're we don't set the um when the block is added so that's why it's important to do that uh, i will leave this and that other one set to zero so it just uses the default values but again if you want to delay it a little bit longer you can set these two numbers here and here to basically adjust the time for the growth for the stages and then generation, we don't really have anything going on in generation. So that's all there is there. And again, very similar things in this one, uh, cross uh, properties. Now, again, like I said, for the block tile entity, we'll need to enable that and set the 
uh, size of inventory to zero and uncheck these two boxes for each one of your block states. Uh, the reason for that is we are using MBT data, so we do need to make sure that the tile entity is set up. I, I set the delay up in the last second, that's why this is all not set up uh, yet, but it will be needed to actually function properly. All right, so the other thing that I forgot to cover is our last stage, stage uh, seven. If we go to properties, uh, you will notice that we have a checkbox right under here. And that basically says use loot table for drops. So the reason why we're doing that is we're basically going to use fortune for dropping and we're going to give a random number of tomatoes, I believe as well. So make sure that part's checked and it will mimic very similar to how the wheat and stuff is set up in Minecraft. And then you want to go to your loot table and you're going to call it. Uh, I know it's not easy to see in 4k resolution we'll go back here but it does uh under the help window it does say what the um basically the loot table uh registry needs to be so it needs to be blocks and then your block registry name so in our case this is tomato plant stage seven. So it's going to be tomato underscore plant underscore stage underscore seven. And then the category is going to be blocks for the namespace. So if we go over here, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the registry is blocks slash and then our registry for the plant or the block that we basically set it to we need it under our mod namespace and then we need the loot table type to be set to block and then you can basically set your um, procedure or your table up for how you want things to drop uh, as a basic thing that's going on here what I've done is it's dropping anywhere from a minimum roll of three to a maximum roll of five for tomatoes and it's affected with um, Oh, it's not affected by for fortune for this one. The loot table uh, pool for the other one is for the seeds is set to one to three seeds and it's affected by fortune. <clears throat> All right, so that leaves us down to the tag and that's literally the last thing that we need to cover in for the custom crops. So the tag down here is just called farmland for what we want it. You can name it whatever you want. And what we're doing is we're going to put in the registry name for the tag, the part that we basically use in the procedures after the colon is going to be this tag right here. And then for the namespace, we're putting the namespace for our mod here. So there's no conflict in their blocks. Lastly, we need the tag type to be set to blocks. Now, if you want to set the, um, element type for basically the blocks that you want to use for farmland you'd I've just selected the farmland block here but if you wanted custom ones then you would basically set what blocks you want the plant to actually grow on and it should work with um, any block that you basically select so if you want somebody to like grow on dirt then you can basically select dirt or crops or whatever you want and it will grow on that particular block there all right, so that's all there is to it. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.